Now, today I'm going to talk about the FX CPUs. Are they dead? They came out in 2013 and pretty much nobody is using them anymore. Although they still retail for about £90 or $100 on eBay for whatever reason. And I didn't actually know this, but the FX 9590 apparently was part of Xbox One and PS4. Although the clock speeds were much lower and I think they were actually 8 core. Whereas it's debatable whether these FX CPUs were actually 8 core or not. So in terms of life still left in this CPU, what I wanted to see is could Steam OS bring this CPU back from the dead? And the reason why I say this is because the scheduler in Windows is apparently really bad and Linux is a lot better. So I thought let me go out and test this. I used two batches of SSD drives, one Kingston for Steam OS and the other for Windows and they're pretty much installed fresh install. I used a thousand watt power supply and I used a Formula Crosshair 5 Formula Z motherboard. Pretty impressive for what it is but for some reason it doesn't let me boot off M.2 and then I'm using this enormous Zalman CPU cooler so definitely keeping it cool no matter what happens within these benchmarks. I managed to get it to clock to 4.9 gigahertz and I'm also using an RX 6700 XT. This is a bit overkill for this CPU GPU configuration but I really want to stress the CPU. So installing Steam OS, I got a little bit confused because I actually went on the Steam website, made a key and that did not work. And apparently that is actually used for the Steam Deck only and you have to go into the GitHub repository. So the software I downloaded was Bazetti, Baz Bazetti, I don't know how to pronounce that bloody thing, but it took forever to install. Once it did, and you also need to have it connected to Ethernet for it to go, I need to get Windows set up and I found out the adrenaline FPS counter was incorrect. I downloaded Afterburner and they have Norton Antivirus bundled in with Afterburner for whatever reason. It's it's like it's like going to the pharmacy, picking up your prescription of paracetamol and then getting herpes at the same time. You know, what the f is that all about? I, I don't understand. Anyway, so yeah, I made sure Norton Antivirus wasn't being installed and then I was all set to test out some games and see how they boot. I have to say, booting into games on Steam OS worked super amazingly well. You got into your games pretty much straight away. It was very smooth, no freezes, no hesitation. Of course, you can't use games like Call of Duty because any cheat games don't work on Steam OS at the moment, which is a bit unfortunate. But yeah, I mean, you get into the menus and you get into the game pretty fast, which was brilliant. Uh, Windows? bit of a different story. Now Windows you get the speeding wheel of doom that just stays there forever. Uh, I was almost gonna reboot the system and then it suddenly came to life and it got stuck on this risk of seizure screen which I thought was quite amusing to be honest. Uh, I thought that was for me and not for the computer but anyways let's get on to the benchmarks. First game I am testing is Tomb Raider. Uh, all games are tested at 1080p and in this benchmark actually they were very very close together. Um, the average FPS was only 2 FPS slower on Steam OS compared to Windows 10 and if you're just using the GPU on say a more modern CPU you're probably going to get higher FPS counts. If you want to see a video of me comparing this to say uh, Ryzen 7 5800X, let me know. I can compare the difference between the FX 9590 sorry, and the uh, Ryzen 7. So overall, um, the benchmarks went pretty well. I played a little bit in the game and it ran better on Steam OS. There were less freezes, but again, the benchmarks don't lie. Um, the benchmark scores were a lot higher on Windows so I think in this instance Windows takes the crown and uh, yeah this is a pretty old game but stay in the end you might find something fairly interesting. 
running GTA 5. Again, this is at 1080p. The reason for that is to stress the CPU as much as possible um, so that the CPU tries to keep up with the GPU. And again here, uh, if I'm being honest, I think probably Windows takes the crown again. Just overall, the FPS was slightly higher. I wouldn't say it was massively higher than Steam OS. Um, in some instances, it did peak up, but the frame rate was somewhat all over the place. Um, but the frame time, I have to say, was fairly steady on Steam OS. I couldn't really tell on Windows, but I can tell you from looking at the recording, you know, both are pretty smooth and comparable with each other. So, yeah, I mean, they're both not bad at all. Um, so I'd have to give this one to Windows, I think, just because it got slightly higher FPS all around. Now, moving on to a much newer title, and this is where things start to get interesting. Unfortunately, the FPS counter that I used for this game was AMD Adrenaline, which was lying to me. So I used the in-game FPS counter, so I didn't get any other measurements as part of this game. But you can clearly see that SteamOS is killing it compared to Windows. You're getting a much higher FPS rate in Cyberpunk 2077. And yeah, I think you have a bit of experience. The interesting thing is on the older titles, probably, you know, Windows took it. It got slightly high FPS, not by much, but a small amount. But it's interesting that a CPU that was released in 2013 is getting high FPS with SteamOS now. I mean, uh, maybe we should compare this to, say, like a 4th gen i5 or an i7. And again, if you want me to do something like that, I can do just to see what the difference is. But this is really interesting to see that we are starting to see a divergence on some of the newer titles. Maybe it's taken more use of some of the cores in the FX 9590. Um, let's have a look at the next game. Now with Hogwarts Legacy, I have to be honest, I really couldn't re tell you the difference between the two. Unfortunately, there's no benchmark mode that I could really put through this, this game through. So I just randomly ran around... Um, the school wherever I am I don't know Harry Potter that well if I'm being completely honest um but yeah I mean you know it would range from about 30 fps to say 80 fps I would say maybe Steam OS has a slightly higher fps but very very slightly maybe um but you tell me which one do you think looks better which one do you think takes a crown in this game, SteamOS or Windows? Um, let me know in the comment section below. But for me, I think I'm probably going to call this one a draw. Um, even in the outside, outdoor sections, I don't know, you, you can't really tell. So yeah, draw for me on this one. So the most recent title I have in this list of games that I'm testing is Helldivers 2, released around March of this year. And on Steam OS, you are going to get much higher frame rates than on Windows. So there was just under 20% increase in the FPS that you would get in Steam OS compared to Windows. And the frame time was super smooth. Now, playing this game in Windows, even just going into the boot sequence, sometimes the textures wouldn't load in properly. Sometimes you'd get a really long load time and it would just take forever to get into the game. And I don't know if that might be caused by a third party factor, but I'm booting both games from SSD drives. Granted, they are slightly different, but there shouldn't be that much difference between the two. Bar that, everything else is the same. So... To take away really from this investigation and maybe I should de dig deeper. Let me know if you think I should in the comments below. But taking an old FX CPU and turning it into a Steam OS console that you could put underneath your TV. Maybe not pair it with a 6700 XT 
and go with an RX 580 might be a better choice here, then I think it could be a fairly capable Steam gaming system that you could have in your living room. I wouldn't discard this CPU just yet. I think it still has a little bit of life left in it. So in conclusion, I wouldn't recommend going out and buying an FX CPU at this point. It just can't keep up with some of the more recent CPUs. Plus, more recent CPUs have come down in price so much it makes more sense to stick with those. But if you have an old FX laying around, maybe revive it as a Steam gaming system that you can have in your living room or as a, or as a spare gaming system overall it's not a bad platform at all so if you like this video if you found it useful if you want me to do other tests that you may want me to do on this cpu or even an fx 8350 let me know again in the comments section below and i will make another video uh about going into more detail on this system but otherwise thank you very much for watching and i'll see you in the next one